Now let's talk about more specifics of the uh, delta H reaction. Uh, remember, it is the change in enthalpy of chemical reaction. It is the, really the measure of the heat energy uh, gained or lost, uh, or lost, there should be an O there, sorry, for a reaction at constant pressure. And we won't worry about the constant pressure part too much because everything we do is at constant pressure of uh, the pressure of the atmosphere, so don't worry about that. And enthalpy as a term is a good term to know, but um, it's not a term that um, we really have to know too much more about in this course, uh, although once you get the general chemistry, you'll have to know more. Uh, this is also page 21, not 22. Now, um, this is an exothermic reaction, and uh, it's the burning or combustion of propane. We've seen this one before. It has, um, and the exothermic reaction has delta H less than zero. That's new information. The sign of delta H tells you whether a reaction is uh, exothermic or endothermic. And um, this is an exothermic reaction. It is uh, heat therm is exiting with the reaction releasing energy to the surroundings. Now, uh, this is oftentimes how you'll see a reaction. You'll see it's balanced and it has a delta H reaction value. That tells you that this delta H reaction is a uh, value minus 2044 kilojoules per mole is associated with this reaction. Sometimes we also put it on the same line as well. Now, um, we can also do this. We can take this number and add it to the product side as kilojoules. And the negative sign here, remember, just means that it's a product. So signs do have important meanings in chemistry and science. Um, however, the mind, so there is no such thing as negative energy, right? Negative energy is a construct. <laughs> Uh, we say that some people have negative energy, but energy as a scientific concept is always, um, well, let's say this, negative energy means energy is being given off or produced, and that's why it comes here. Now, what else does this mean? Well, if we take away the energy and we come back to think about uh, potential energy, something we've talked about way long ago, so... If I were to say potential energy, and I was to make a little plot here, and I was going to look at the potential energy of, and the x-axis, well, this is what's called a reaction energy diagram. And you'll see these quite a bit as we go. And <clears throat> reaction energy diagrams always have reactants on the left and products on the right. And they oftentimes have the words reaction progress on the x-axis because the reaction goes from reactants to products. And let me go ahead and draw this. So C3HA plus 5O2 and 3CO2 plus 4H2O. So I have my reactants up here. And again, the reactants are always on the left, and the products are always on the right. Um, and what this says is, uh, the positions of these is, that the positions of the atoms in the reactants the positions of the atoms in the reactants have higher potential energy than the positions of the atoms in the products. Have higher potential energy, PE, than the positions of the atoms in the products. Because the question is, where does this energy come from that is given off? The energy that is given off comes about because there's changes in the positions of the atoms 
as we move from reactants to products. And this is a specific reaction energy diagram for an exothermic reaction. And for an exothermic reaction, the reactants are higher than the products. And we'll do one more thing. The difference here in height is actually equal to delta H reaction. And that means that this number 2044 kilojoules is the difference in potential energy between these two. That's, and okay, so, and just to be clear, or attempt to be clear, so these two things, or these reactants, these six things, I guess, have more potential energy than these. Because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at the exact same reaction, but the reactants and products have been flipped. And so um, we'll talk about the endothermic thing in a minute. But now we're going to take these and slide them over to the left. And we're gonna take these and slide them over to the right because these will now be the reactants. Okay, and so I don't know if I quite drew it right, but if we look at these two, the idea is that the C3H8, it always has the same potential energy, and the products, the CO2 and the 4H2O, always have the same potential energy. <clears throat> and that now, in order to go from, oop, I should complete my picture here. This says reaction progress. And this is a reaction energy diagram. And beep, 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 beep. The difference in height is still delta H reaction. And okay, so same picture. This is for endothermic. And um, the heat, which the energy, which was on the same side as the carbon dioxide and the H2O, is still on the same side. As the CO2 and the H2O. And what we're trying to say with this is that if you want to turn three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of H2O gas into propane and five moles of oxygen, you need to add 2,044 kilojoules of energy to make that happen. Now, um, this is an endothermic reaction. Energy or heat energy has to go into the reaction and um, delta H will now be positive. That's, by can, that's just how we do it meaning that positive energy means that it is an endothermic reaction. And again, positive energy, it's, it's just energy. The direction of energy is uh, what the sign means. And the reaction taking in energy from the surroundings. So we're not saying where this energy comes from, but we're just saying it does take this much energy to do it. And that is an exothermic and an endothermic reaction and its relation to potential energy. Uh.